Hi, I'm Dr. Eti Benchabat from Brain Rehab Academy, and in this video, I'd like to speak with you about anatophobia. Anatophobia is made out of two words, anatomy and phobia. In other words, the phobia of anatomy. You may have not heard this term before, but you may, act may actually suffer from it. You wouldn't have heard this term before because I just invented it. And the reason I invented it is because I kind of sense it from clinicians quite frequently. So this is how it goes. Sometimes I start talking about brain imaging and then people become quite apologetic or uncomfortable saying that they don't know the neuroanatomy, don't remember the neuroanatomy, need to refresh the neuroanatomy. And it made me think, what is it about the learning of neuroanatomy that makes it challenging, that makes it not stick because I know you can learn neuroanatomy in a way that sticks. See, the problem is that when we learn neuroanatomy, we learn about structures and it's often in a theoretical manner talking about individual structures. And the problem with that is that general theory that is not embedded in context it loses its meaningfulness. So if something is meaningful to us, we're more likely to remember it. The way to make neuroanatomy meaningful is to follow four steps. Step number one, learn structures in relation to each other. So don't learn just about individual structures, but learn how they relate to each other. Step number two, learn neuroanatomy in context. So the context of neuroanatomy is brain imaging because you're not going to be doing autopsy of your patients. So the only way for you to look at the brains is by looking at the brain scans. So learning neuroanatomy or structures of neuroanatomy and then taking it straight away to brain imaging, that's really effective because that's how you're going to look at the structures of the lesion of your patients. So the context there. The third step, you want to learn with the purpose of identifying the lesion so that you know which structures are affected, so that you know how you need to modify your assessment and treatment. And the fourth step is learning it in the context of your own patients. And the reason you need to learn it in the context of your own patients, because you'll have a face and a story to attach to a lesion and a structure, and you'll be very clear in your mind how this person is or has presented or is presenting, this way you cementing a memory of structure and function to a patient and experience you have. And because you're linking in your memory system to different types of memories, you are more likely to remember it. So there you have it. Neuroanatomy can be learned in a way that will stick if it's learned in a practical way. If you learn about structures in relation to each other, if you learn about structures in context of brain images, if you learn about structures in relation to lesions and what was affected, and when you learn it in relation to specific patients. I remember when I was studying anatomy, one of the most um, useful textbooks for me was Clinically Oriented Anatomy. And the reason it was so meaningful is because there were little snippets, little boxes of where there were clinical stories related to particular structures. And that's when I really remembered the anatomy. So it's very similar when you learn neuroanatomy. In fact, this is the way I teach all my brain imaging courses. And this is how my trained clinicians view the brain images, analyze the structures, analyze the lesions. So it is possible to learn neuroanatomy in a sticky way, in a way that will stick in your head. If you'd like to learn it with me, go ahead to my courses page on my website and look at the various courses you can do. Otherwise, keep on following me. Please like and share this post if you think someone else can benefit from it. And good luck with learning neuroanatomy.